Welcome to this session. I'm Ujun Kim from Open Networking Foundation. And I am research scholar at Open Networking Foundation as well as I'm a PhD candidate in post tech South Korea. So today I will be talking about MCORD connectivity, deep technical dive. And in this talk, I will cover uh, how to uh, define the interface for communication between each, uh, for communication between virtual network functions and see how to define and how to make uh, each you know, interface. So here is the uh, outline. First, I briefly introduce the EPC connectivity and I will show you how to define those interface in code level. And as a practice, I will add uh, some new uh, service in the you know, M core scenario and build. And I will let you know uh, I will let you show the result and summarize my talk. So here is the EPC connectivity. So as you already knew that there are so uh, several uh, essential uh, cellular network functions here. So we can divide this, you know, uh, this part, this figure into two parts. First one is U trend that is highly related with a uh, radio part. And second one is EPC, that is the uh, you know core network. So in M chord pod, we did actually M chord pod just have those four essential network function. I mean only focus on the EPC, not U trend, right? Because RRH, I mean base station is outside the M chord pod. So we just focus on the EPC. And in our scenario, and of course, in this scenario, uh, those both S gateway and P gateway is combined. Uh, those uh, virtual network functions are combined to the SP gateway, and we divide the SP gateway into the control plane and user plane. That is our scenario. And also, we can use the SDN controller in between the control plane and user plane. It is our uh, Cord build scenario. And let's go to in detail. So here is the real our scenario. There are four virtual network functions, virtual inode B, control plane, SDN controller, and user plane. Uh, actually, I already mentioned those three parts, and virtual inode B is one of the emulator which is you know uh, developed by Spirant. This emulator includes UE, RRH, BBU, MME, and even PDN. Actually, it is the, uh, the emulator. And it is our real scenario for code build. And here's another option. We can, if you want to, if you don't want to, the, if you don't want to use the uh, SDN controller, then you can just remove it. Okay, that is the simple version of code build scenario. So I will explain on this scenario, okay? So let's go back to the previous uh, figure. There are two parts and in order to communicate between two, you know, two or some virtual network functions, we should define the interface in UTREN. For UE and RRH should be should we use, you know, the radio interface and for RRH and BBU, we just sh we should define the frontal, but you know it is outside the M chord part. So in M chord part, we just define those one, two, three, four, five, five interfaces, right? So for BBU and MME, actually LT in, LT specification already defined those five interfaces, like this. For uh, BBU and MME, LTE specification defines as 11 MME interface. And for this link, LTE specification defines as one new. For those three links, three interface, LTE specification defines as 11, S5, and SGI uh, interface respectively. So let's think about it. How to uh, define, how to make each interface in M code part? Okay, just remove this one. Only focus on this one, okay? So we can use the XOS network 
to define each interface, okay? Like this. From uh, actually LTE interface, I mean, for, define, for defining XOS interfa LTE interface, we can use the XOS, XOS network in MCOR pod. So let's go in detail. Uh, here is the uh, blue box, means the MCOR pod, and there are four virtual network functions, as I mentioned before. It is the uh, typical LTE specification. And the green circles mean, green circles represent you know, the LTE interface, okay? So as I mentioned before, those two virtual network functions are combined into SP gateway, and then we divide the SP gateway into control plane and user plane. And of course, we can use the SDN controller in between the control plane and user plane. And also, uh, we just use the emulator in this scenario. So, V E node B, which is the emulator, has MME, BBU, and even PDN. So we, so let's think about it. So first, in the M code part, S5 interface and S1 MME interface are unnecessary because those two interfaces are already defined in each virtual network function. So XOS does not, you know, uh, consider those two parts. And one more thing. As I mentioned before, we divide the serving P gateway to, into the control plane and user plane. And we can use the SDN controller in between the control plane and user plane. So we need additional link. I mean, we need additional interface. So uh, we actually require those three interface and some, some additional interface for this concept. So let's make a list for interface. In, now for the LT interface here, as I mentioned before, those two interfaces are necessary in XOS because those are uh, already defined in each virtual network function. So we should, make, we should consider those first three interfaces, right? And then we actually uh, divide this serving P gateway into control plane and user plane. And optionally, we can use the SDN controller in between the control plane and user plane. So we should make a new interfaces. If we want to use the SDN controller in between control plane and user plane, then we should uh, define northbound interface and south inter southbound interface, right? And so if you, want, if you don't want to use the SDN controller, then you should make a direct interface, that is SP gateway interface. So we, we should uh, define those blue interfaces and purple interfa interfaces, right? And each interface should change to XOS network in anchor part, okay? Uh, first, we should make the S1U network for S1U interface in XOS, and then make S11 network and SGI network for SD11 interface and SGI interface, respectively. And for the purple boxes, if you want to use the SDN controller, then you sh should make uh, the NBI network and SBI network. Otherwise, you should make the SP gateway network in XOS. So here is the detailed figure. Uh, those three one, S11 network, S1U network, and SGI network is for LTE interfaces, right? And we additionally use the SDN controller in between control plane and user plane. We should define the northbound interface and southbound interface. That is northbound interface network and southbound interface network. That is the new interface, okay? It is the case with the SDN controller. And if you don't want to use the SDN controller, you should make a direct, you, you know, direct interface like this. That is the SP gateway network. It is the new uh, interface. Sorry. The, of course, those three three uh, networks are uh, for LTE interface. Of course. So from now on, I will explain whole stuff on this uh, scenario. Okay, very simple scenario, and. I explain 
how to define, how to connect the, each network in XOS, in code level. Before I start, you can see uh, some code which I, which I will explain. You can access Garrett or GitHub, and you can find some code. And in this talk, I just used platform install project and code project. So here's the link. You can find any code. So, and here is the target scenario. As I mentioned before, I will use the simple version without the you know, SDN controller. And each network has, a, you know, each IP, uh, actually I assigned each uh, IP address in each network like this. SP gateway network will use 117.0.0.0 IP address and, and so on. One more thing is that you should define the management network because if you want to uh, connect the each virtual network function, then actually you should, you know, the public, I mean, the management port to connect each virtual network function. So you should define the management port. And the management uh, network has 172.27.0.0 IP addresses. So let's make, I mean, let's define the S1U network. So first, uh, you should go to the, this directory, platform install dash, roles dash, core profile dash template, and make an S1U network yaml.j2 file. In this file, you should uh, define three sections. First one is network template, second one is network, and last one is slice. At first, let's make a network template. Just write the label here, as one your template, type is network template, and write some properties below. It's done, very easy. And go to the network here, similar to before, write down the label here, and type is network, and write down some properties. The important thing is that you should write the uh, network IP address in here, okay, 7 a. And go to the next part, slice here. And, you know, same as before, write down the, you know, label here, write some description, and type. Type is Tosca dot, knows that slice here. And write, write down some properties like this and requirements. And then go back to the, here, the network section, and just see this part, requirements part. You should register network templates and slice in here, okay? It's done. You already, you know, defined the S1U network. And the remain part is, actually we should uh, define three more networks, right? That is S11 network. It is very, it is same as before. You can, you know, just copy and paste and change some name here and IP address here. It's the same. It has three parts for network template. Write down the label here, write down the type and properties below, and go to network here, write label types, and write down some IP addresses. And go to slice here, write the label, descriptions, type, properties, requirements, and then register both network template and slice into here. It's done. And likewise, SGI is same as before, and SP Gateway is also the same as before. It has three sections, network template, network slice, and you should write down the IP address here and register template and slice into the network. It's done. Uh, you already defined those four network for, you know, uh, interface. And then, okay, so, we already defined those four networks. It's just, you know, definition. And then we should include those four networks in this file. It is this mcordx X service file means that, you know, it, this file includes all information about VNF and network, I mean interface among virtual network functions. So if you want to use uh, networks, which we already defined before, we should register those four networks on top of this file, okay? 
So first, you, first we should register the S1 U network here, and then S11, SGI, and finally register the SP gateway network on top of this file. And each uh, network has type, each network type has Tosca nodes network here, and write down some properties. And then let's think about the V node B first. Actually, we just define the network and just register, uh, just register in the you know, service file which one to use, right? And then we should make some link to, you know, link from you know, each virtual network function to network. That is the network slice. So first, we just focus on the VNODB, and VNODB uh, is connected from SGI network, S1U network, and S11 network, like this, right? And one more thing is that, as I mentioned before, in M code pod should require, you know, I mean, we should, you know, uh, define the management port. So we should uh, define four uh, network slice like this here. I'll go back to the mcordex service file here, and those uh, v node b service slice a service instance are already defined in this file. And below this part, we just write down the network slice to, for those four networks, four, four network management, S11 network, S1U network, and SGI network. Uh, each of section has Tosca knows, Tosca that knows that network slice type, and it has two requirements. First one is network, and second one is slice. So the slice is very simple. The slice means this one, V in ODB slice. Just write down the label for this one. And network node is actually the label as we uh, actually, it is the label which we already defined on top of you know, this file. And let's go to control plane. We should define the network slice for S11 network and SP8 network. Of course, we should define the management port. So likewise, uh, write the management network label, S11 network label, and SP gateway network label. Each type has, each type is Toscada knows that network slice, and requirements is the same as before, that token slice. That token is which we already, you know, defined on top of this file, and slice is that one. And last part is the user plane, and PSP gateway user plane, and user plane, uh, S3 network slice, actually plus one because management port. And let's let's see the code. Here we should uh, write four label for management network, SGI network, SP gateway network, and S1U network. The type is the same as before, Toscada knows that network slice, and here's the requirement. Network and slice, same as before. Very simple. So it's done. Uh, and then it is actually definition was done. And we should import the profile manifest uh, about the, you know, all networks and the services here. So let's find the XOS new Tosca config templates. You should import those four files in here and then import this one and call the X services file in this part. And, and then, uh, you should def uh, you should register the uh, inode B, BSP gateway C control plane and user plane in XOS service. In here, so when in this situation we can build, and result is here. If you want to find which, whether it works, it actually it organized well. You can use this command, Noval list all tenants. Here's the result. And here is the target scenario, okay? So first, let's see the management port here. Management port used 172.72.0.0 network IP address. So let's see. Each row means the uh, virtual network function 
And this one is network information here. All virtual network function has management port here, here, and here. And those net, each of, you know, each network functions use same network IP address, I mean, same networks, right? 172.27.4.0.4. This one is same, and this one is same. Actually, it just means that they, you know, are registered in the same network here. And, okay, so see one more, time, one more thing. See the SP gateway network here. SP gateway network, I mean, only control plane and user plane use the SP gateway network. Not in B. So in B does not have uh, SP gateway network, right? And in control plane here, SP gateway here. Control plane use 117.0.0.a for SP gateway network. And user plane use 117.0.0.11 for SP gateway network. So same as, uh, you know, other networks also. Uh, works well because you know just check about this and then let's practice uh, as I explained before those um, pre scenario is the simple version without the SDN controller right so let's add the SDN controller service it is the practice so here is the previous slide a uh, previous uh, scenario in this situation we should add SDN controller like this. When we use, uh, if we want to use the SDN controller from previous slide, we just remove SP gateway network first, right? And then register the SDN controller service, but it is already, you know, uh, implemented in the XOS. So just, it is assumption and just use it. And then we should define those two networks, MBI network and SBI network. So summarize, summarize that, remove this one, register this one, and make two networks. That's the practice. So let's, let's define the MBI uh, network first. It is the same as before. Uh, you know, define the network template here, define network, and define slice, and then you should write the IP address, correct IP address here, and then register both network template and slice into this part. Okay, it's done. And likewise, for SBI network, also you should define network template here, network here, and slice here. You should write down the correct IP address, the properties of a network, and then register both network template and slice in requirements in the network section. And then go back to the mcore DAC service file. Actually, in previous scenario, we use we use the uh, SP gateway network. So, but in this situation, in this scenario, we don't use the SP gateway. So just remove it and add those two network here. Okay, here, MBI network and SBI network. Just register. I mean, import on top of mcore DAC service file. And then let's see the SDN controller here. This SDN controller use those two network, right? Um, at first, we should register the SDN controller in the uh, mcore X service file first, and then define the network slice for MBI network and SBI network. Here, let's see the SDN controller model. In this file, there are three parts. First one is service, second one is a vendor, and last one is service instance. So you should register all kinds of stuff in the mcordex service file like this. First, uh, write down the type SDN controller service here, and then vendor and service instance. After that, you should write the uh, Tosca node slice for SDN controller like this, okay? But you know it is actually you can you can easily understand when you compare with uh, VSPK to AC and new codes. It is very easy, but not focus on now because it is out of scope in this talk. Let's just focus on this network part, okay? 
as I mentioned before, the SDN controller uh, should actually use the SBI network and NBN network. Of course, it is one of the virtual network functions, so you should define the management network here. Right? It is the same as before. And let's see the control plane here. Actually, without the SDN controller, the, there is the direct interface between control plane and user plane, but it goes, it, it was gone. So the uh, SP gateway interface should be replaced to API network, right? For control plane. Wait a second. Here. Okay. So just to replace from SP gateway network to MBI network in network slice. Just replace from uh, SP gateway network to MBI network. Likewise, for user, user plane, just change from SP gateway network to SPI network. Yes, this is done to define each network and sli network slice. And then go back to mcore.dx file. It is the profile manifest. And then see this part, XOS new Tosca config templates. And actually, we, we do not use SP gateway network, so remove this one and add MBI network and SBI network here. And then we add the SDN controller service. So register, let's register the uh, SDN controller service in XOS services part. Okay, so, and then after that, we should build, you know, this changed uh, code, right? So if you uh, want to build this code at first time, then you should follow this, you know, this commands. Just make a configuration file and build. And and if you already build, if you already built, you know, XOS before, and you should ch use some, you changes some code, and you want to rebuild this XOS, then you should follow this line, this comment. Okay. So I will show you some result. Wait a second. So I pre. I prepared two machines here. Left one is for uh, non-SDN controller scenario, and this one is SDN controller scenario. Okay. Okay, so first I will show you uh, the results in with in the case without the SDN controller. Okay, so as you can see that, there are three virtual network functions. Oh, where is it? Okay, here. In node B, SP gateway C, SP gateway U, right? And then, And then uh, we make uh, those networks, SGI network, SP gateway network, S11 network, S1U network, and management network like this. It is the case without, you know, SDN controller. And let's see the SDN controller case. So as you can see that there are four virtual network functions, SDN controller, inode B, 
SP Gateway C, SP Gateway U. And the network information is information is here. So we define SGI network, SBI network, S1U, S11, MBI network, and management network. So uh, you can, uh, you know, compare both, you know, information. Actually, SDN controller has MBI network and, okay, where is SBI network? I cannot find. Anyway, so actually you can just compare in this result here and <laughs> Likewise, uh, you know, this case is, you know, without the, it's, this is the case without SDN controller, so there is no uh, SDN controller service and there is no SBI and MBI network, right? Okay. <clears throat> so let's summarize. Uh, as you already knew that MCOR is, you know, promising technology to manage the EPC network, as well as, as you can see that, it is very easy to define each interface or networks for connection between, you know, virtual network function. And in this talk, I cover how to define the networks, I mean interface, and how to connect, you know, uh, how to connect the network and network slice in XOS. So our future work is now we prepared the release one and the, we just think about the new service. Uh, if, we, if we, you know, think, you know, uh, if we define the new service, then we should make uh, new services, a synchronizer in XOS, and we should make some connections, right? And then we, uh, you know, just test, deploy, evaluation, and so on. And you can collaborate with us, okay? If you want to, you know, implement anything in MCOR, please just notify, notify to us. Just discuss and just do it. And here is the, uh, some information how to contact to us. Here is mailing list, Slack. And if you want to know something, then you can find the guidebook, and you can find any code in code repository, and our regular meeting, is open at every Monday 9.30, 9.30 Pacific time. And here is useful links for you guys. The first one is open uh, course website, and this is tutorial documents and so on. If, if you have any questions, actually, you can find any information in this you know, website. And here is a code repository. And if you want to, you, I mean, if you have any questions, and please, you know, send the email, okay? Okay, thank you for listening. I have a quick question. Yes. So, uh, just about the, the M-Court meeting. So you mentioned it's, it's 9.30 on Monday. Uh, where is that advertised? Oh. Does anybody have any questions for this one? Okay, for thank you for listening.